Welcome to another edition of the J Report. On this episode, we meet folks from around the globe fighting for a better tomorrow for future generations to come. Now, when my wife Tina and I decided to start a family, we knew we had to take one additional step that many of our friends did not. We needed to undergo genetic screening. You see, both Tina and I descend from Ashkenazi or Eastern European Jews, and we had come to learn that our ancestors may have passed deleterious gene mutations down through the generations. Well, technology has advanced even more dramatically since Tina and I had Ivy and Page over a decade ago, and we are pleased to introduce you to a company that is on the forefront of those technological advances. Then we meet two young men who are fighting for the future of the Israel Defense Forces, metaphorically speaking. Aaron Leff and Michael Spector have become young leaders and friends of the Israel Defense Forces. Find out why they are standing tall in support of this Zionist organization. And finally, much of the world watched with great anticipation during the period that became known as the Arab Spring. But how much has freedom flourished since that optimistic era? We look at One Nation's struggle. But first, we introduce you to JScreen. For decades, demographers have grappled with one perplexing question. What is the size of the Jewish population in the world today? In the final analysis, the number that continually pops up, about 14 million individuals living today are Jewish and 80% of those individuals descend from Ashkenazi or Eastern European Jews. But how is it determined if someone is actually Jewish? Is Judaism a religion or is Judaism an ancestry? Your ancestry is really where you came from, where your family came from, what your background is, whereas religion is really more a set of beliefs um, and a set of rituals that you follow. One can debate that question as a matter of sociological classification but as it relates to the medical field, Judaism has become tied to genetic ancestry. In regard to genetic screening, it's really important to differentiate because we're looking at your ancestry. So if you have Jews in your background, then you're at risk for Jewish genetic diseases. It doesn't matter if you practice that religion. It's your background that's important from a genetic perspective. Yes, Jews, and for our purposes specifically Ashkenazi Jews, find themselves at greater risk for certain inherited diseases. Ashkenazi Jews are at risk for 19 diseases that are more common in that group. So why are Ashkenazi Jews at greater risk for at least 19 diseases? It's based on what is known as the founder effect. When you have a group of people who um, tend to intermarry within that group, and this is true of a lot of different groups, the genes become more prevalent within that group. Put another way, in 1400, the Ashkenazi Jewish population numbered around 20,000. And up through the last century, Jews intermarried out of the faith at a rate of only one half of 1% per generation. So for all intents and purposes, the over 11 million Eastern European Jews living today descend from just 20,000 people. Let me give you the example. If a trait is in the population that one in 500 people carries an abnormal form of a gene, and that population of 500 is suddenly driven down to 50, but among those 50 people is that one person who's a carrier. When that population expands again, the new ratio is one in 50, not one in 500. Now, some of these diseases may sound familiar to you. Fragile X, cystic fibrosis, Gaucher's disease, Canavan disease, Bloom syndrome, Others may not be as familiar, familial dysautonomia or Joubert syndrome. Now, the precise names of the diseases or syndromes are not as important to know or understand. The knowledge that is critical, how does an individual become affected by these medical conditions known as autosomal recessive diseases? With these type of um, diseases, they're all autosomal recessive. So if you are a carrier of the disease, you will not develop the disease later in your life. 
you're just at risk of having a child with the disease if your partner also is a carrier. Now, what are the odds that a couple, both of Ashkenazi Jewish descent, will be impacted? If both parents test positive for one of these diseases, the same disease, then they have a 25% chance of having a baby with this disease. It's important to emphasize that that doesn't mean that if you have four children, one is going to be affected. There's a 25% risk in each pregnancy that the child will be affected. Those are independent risks. So how does a couple determine if they are at risk in the 21st century? Well, it's easy. Introducing J-Screen. The J-Screen is a nonprofit program. It's based out of Emory University in Atlanta. And what we're really trying to do is allow people to access genetic screening from home, uh, become educated about screening, be screened, and then receive their results at home without having to go through a community screening program or their doctor's office. So the way the program works is if somebody's interested in, in screening, they go to our website, which is jscreen.org, they uh, watch an educational video, they learn about screening, uh, they go through a consent process and enter some information about themselves. Um, they're then mailed a saliva collection kit and collect their sample at home. Um, their sample is sent in in prepaid uh, packaging by FedEx to the testing lab and within about two weeks their results are ready. Um, when their results are ready they receive an email um, that tells them to, uh, if, they're, if it turns out that they're a carrier, to schedule a genetic counseling appointment, um, which they can do either by telephone or through secure video conferencing, and learn about their results. Um, after that, they're able to get a, a copy of their results, which they can then share with their physician. And what we're really trying to do is make this information easily accessible and make sure that people understand their results and what that means for them in planning for their families. Ori and Navit Salzberg are J-Screen clients. So my J-Screen experience is really positive and easy overall. So my results came in two weeks later and I set up a call on secure video conferencing with a genetic counselor. And she was able to explain to me my results. She went over everything and also sent me a document so that I could give it to my doctor and we could go over it. There's something really nice about being able to do it at your home. You don't have to go to a doctor's office and you don't have that kind of clinical feeling being able to do it in your home. Now, what if only one member of a couple tests positive? Well, that is the exact scenario faced by the Salzburgs, both Eastern European Jews. I found out I was positive for a common Jewish genetic disease. Um, my brother and my cousins were also positive. So I wasn't surprised when I found out, but it was actually really nice to know um, that my husband, Ori, is not positive. That is the key. If only one parent carries the gene mutation relating to a specific disease, the risk of an offspring contracting that disease is negligible. Now we know that you know, there's a chance that we'll pass on the, the uh, disease as a carrier, but the child will develop the disease. So getting screened, both of us getting screened really gave us the most information. Now what are the options if a couple falls into the 1% that both test positive as carriers for the same disease? They have several options. One option is to do nothing, uh, to conceive naturally, but to know that they're at risk for this disease and discuss it with their pediatrician at the time of birth. Another option would be for them to consider prenatal diagnosis. This can be done after conception in the late first trimester or early second trimester. Um, testings available such as CDS or chorionic villus sampling, which is highly accurate at making the diagnosis of the disease. Another option that couples have is to consider a pre-implantation genetic diagnosis. This is part of assisted reproductive technology or in vitro fertilization, where a woman um, is given medications to make multiple eggs. Those eggs are then retrieved through a, a simple outpatient procedure. Those eggs are then fertilized with her partner's sperm, and the embryos are then tested for this genetic disease they're at risk for before we choose which embryos to place back. Another um, option for couples that are at risk for uh, one of the diseases is they could consider using donor, a donor sperm or donor egg uh, when they conceive their child. As long as the donor is not a carrier for the disease, and their risk is minimal. Now, as for the cost to obtain genetic screening through JScreen, JScreen can be purchased as a gift by signing on to www.jscreen.org slash gift or directly. Now, JScreen offers two types of tests, genotyping checks for common genetic changes. 
So for people who have medical insurance, the most that they'll pay for this genetic testing is $99. And that's both for the Jewish panel or for the expanded panel. If a person is uninsured, the self-pay rate is $599. We found that the vast majority of people coming through the program do have medical insurance within a maximum $99. You may also consider genetic sequencing. This advanced technology analyzes the gene from the beginning to end and is able to detect genetic anomalies at a higher rate than genotyping. The cost for sequencing runs $299 with medical insurance. One condition warranting special mention, Tay-Sachs, a disease which sadly is 100% fatal to the afflicted child. Now, Tay-Sachs carrier screening has the highest detection rate when both DNA and enzyme testing are done. Enzyme testing detects about 98% of carriers, regardless of ethnicity, but cannot be performed on saliva. Therefore, it is recommended that all participants follow up with an enzyme blood test through your doctor's office. DNA testing for Tay-Sachs will be done on all J-Screen saliva samples. The accuracy of J-Screen's DNA testing is determined by the method you choose. Genotyping detects about 90% of carriers in the Ashkenazi Jewish population and sequencing detects up to 99% of carriers in all groups. Okay, so what if you have already had a healthy child, or no one in your family has ever contracted one of these Jewish genetic diseases? I think it's important for couples who um, even have a healthy child to get uh, to consider J-Screen, because um, just because you have one healthy child doesn't mean you're both at risk of having a, a child that's affected by a disease on the J-Screen panel. Um, these so-called autosomal recessive diseases, um, they're very silent in families, and you would have no family history at all and be a carrier for it. What if you have had genetic screening in the past? Only the more recent panels, like the J-Screen, includes the 19 diseases and are updated to include the newest mutations in those 19 diseases. So yes, even couples that were screened in the past should consider getting rescreened. What if one member of the couple does not have Eastern European Jewish ancestry, or one member is of mixed ancestry? J-Screen uh, still applies for couples uh, where one is not Jewish, um, or an individual has mixed ancestry. Um, these diseases are more prevalent among Jews, um, but even non-Jews can be carriers for these diseases. In other words, If you're Jewish, if you have Jewish background, if you're married to someone Jewish and planning a family, screening is very important. Go to jscreen.org, learn about your risks, learn about genetic testing, and get screened. To learn more about genetic screening provided by JScreen, simply sign on to jscreen.org. Oh, and by the way, great news, Ori and Navit Salzberg are pregnant with a healthy baby, but uh, they don't know the gender. For the J Report, I'm Brad Pomerantz. Critically valuable information indeed. Okay, on the other side, we meet two Jewish American men who are standing up to support the Israel Defense Forces. We'll be right back.